Hello, today's Bible study comes from 1 Corinthians. We're reading from the 15th chapter, and we're reading the 20 through the 23rd verse, and it reads as follows. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Amen. Well, let's start it off because right here, Paul is talking about the resurrection. And he's telling them, excuse me, that Christ did rise. He, he has done what he said he was going to do. And Paul starts talking to him in regards to this. And he says, now Christ is risen from the dead which is true. Um, remember, Paul was already telling them without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus rose, okay? And as I always say, and I like to let people know, Christ is the only one in the Bible that's been resurrected. And, and now he's just saying now, Christ rose from the dead. And then he says, and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Um, if you look up some of these words, and I always catch myself looking up these words, look up first fruits, um, in the Greek words, and you'll see what it means. Um, it was used for meaning a fee, an entrance fee being paid, and Christ is the first fruits of that entrance fee being paid. He was the first fruits of of the resurrection okay um, and it, you can look back to the Old Testament and you'll see about the first fruits being offered and in different offerings and you can see that in Leviticus um, but then it also says if we have been united together in kindness or together in likeness of his death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection that's in Romans chapter 6 um, so Jesus' resurrection also leads way into our own resurrection because we will be raised with a body like his. So this body will be gone. And it tells you in Corinthians that you go from perishable to imperishable, from mortal to immortal. It means the body is going to change. There is going to be a metamorphosis from physical to spiritual. and if you even look at the feast of the first fruits, um, and that's back in Leviticus, like I said, Jesus rose on that day. He rose on the day after the Sabbath following Passover. So back then it was a grain offering. It didn't have blood. But there was no atoning needed at that time because the Passover lamb has been sacrificed. But it goes perfectly with how the resurrection of Christ was. Christ's death, his resurrection, ended the need for any more sacrifices of any type. It paid for everything. Like I said, if you look at first fruits, it says an entrance fee. For you to go to glory, the entrance fee has been paid. The resurrection of Jesus, like I said, he's our entrance into heaven. So he paid our admission fee to get in. By man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. Um, Paul is saying what he said in Romans, you can see that in chapter 5. But then he says, Adam by man is one, the human race. And we all suffered through Adam, okay? Now, you know they call Jesus the second eye of Adam. But Jesus Christ, he was a man, and he is the other head of the human race. Adam started it off. 
He was a perfect being when he was created, and he was human. But he couldn't do what Christ did. And Jesus Christ is the other head of the human race. And when he is resurrected, we all fall under his headship, his covenant. And Christ all shall be made alive. Now, this asks, is everyone, will everyone be resurrected? Yeah. And you could say, some people say yes and no, but everybody will be resurrected. You will talk to the Lord. And like I said, and I've said it before, Read John 5 and 29, and it'll tell you about the resurrection of life and the resurrection of condemnation. Now, that means everybody will be resurrected, but it doesn't mean everybody will be resurrected to life. Some will be resurrected to condemnation. So know that. Know that he's coming back. If you know that he's coming back, you'll think more of him coming back. And it doesn't, the Bible says all will talk before him. So all bodies have to change. And that's not just for believers. That's for unbelievers too. They will see Christ. But they may not see eternal life with Christ. They will see condemnation. Each one in his own order. We couldn't and shouldn't receive resurrection before Christ did. How could we? See, he was the first fruit, and then everything after it will be at his coming. He will come and pick the fruits. Um, and as you see it, the coming of Jesus means he's going to be present here. It has a special reference to the second coming and you can see that in Matthew but you need to check out Philippians and Jesus is as I said people question this Jesus isn't the first one that was raised from the dead okay he was the first one resurrected and I put an emphasis, an emphasis on the word resurrected. Lazarus was resuscitated. He came back in the same body. The, the, the child that was asleep, Christ says she was sleeping. She came back in the same body. Christ came back in a new body. And it's not just meaning live again, because res resuscitation means you come back. Or you've been revived. But when you're resurrected, you come back in a new body. A new body. And it's a new body suited to be in eternity. See, this physical body will not make it to eternity. So, he was the first one resurrected. Period. Amen.